Good morning, good afternoon everybody, wherever you are around the world. I'm quite happy to show you in this webinar a live session of StarCCM Plus where the objectives will be to look at some of the exciting and unique features that we have to etch with precision. Well, allow me to first show you the motion I would like to enable today in my semiconductor lithography machine. What we see moving on the screens at the moment are our positioning modules. On top of these modules, what you do see in orange are the wafers made of silicium. And we do have the module on the left here, which is at the moment being etched thanks to a laser which is going through a series of lenses on top of the module. On the right hand side, what we do have is another module where the wafer is being inspected and measured before it is being etched under the laser. And this is what we're seeing at this very moment. So we're swapping the two modules and now we're starting to etch the second wafer. Fluid dynamics is very much present in today's semiconductor lithography machines. In particular, the latest generation exposure is using purified water between the lens and the wafer. The water which we use will increase the refractive index and that will make the light beams converge further and thus permit lower etching resolutions. Handling the water between the lens and the wafer is not that simple because the wafer starts, moves and stops abruptly as you could see in the first animation. And this can result in generation of air bubbles or the stripping of liquid droplets and both needs to be avoided. In fact, air bubbles here, they will deflect the light beam which will cause defects while the liquid drops here will evaporate and mark the wafer. It's quite important that we design, we're able to design an efficient water management system that will allow us high productivity and high precision. And this is where Star System Plus can help us. It will give us the extra insight into the machine, the phenomena, and help us predict performances to discover a better design as fast as we can. And we rely on its very efficient streamlined workflow. To build, test, and assess the performance, we need to first recreate a digital twin of this machine in StarCCM Plus. And the workflow is as follows. First, we'll build our virtual prototype by generating its corresponding geometry, and then we'll discretize its domain, extract the ex internal volume of fluid. Secondly, we'll test our machines under certain operating conditions, and we'll be able to do this thanks to StarCCM Plus extensive multi-physics capabilities. Once the test is made, we can now leverage Star System Plus post-processing capabilities to assess performances of the system. So you see, we do have a quite streamlined process, and having this in a single environment will allow us to make a quick and pain-free modifications to our virtual prototypes. For instance, changing the shape of the water system. And being able to test and assess a large number of variants will help us improve our design and discover better designs faster. Great, so let's now switch to StarCCM Plus. And before I dive into the setup of the problem, what I would like to do is show you the interface. On the left hand side of the screen, what we have is what we call a simulation tree. And here, every folder will correspond to one main step of the workflow, ordered in a logical manner. So you start with the geometry and you go all the way down to the post-processing, creating some plots and scenes. As you set up your simulation, you're manipulating objects, defining quantities, distances, things like that. And everything is input into the bottom left panel here, the properties window. You see another panel at the very bottom of the screen, which is currently empty. Later on, this output panel, as we call it, will give you information about the quality of your simulation and how it progresses. Okay, so lastly, what we're seeing is our lithography machine on the main stage. And you can interact with your model, come a little bit closer. And actually, let's hide the surrounding of the geometry and come even closer. So this is the core of our problem. Our two modules that we will want to displace inside our domain. For this live session and demonstration, to make this setup as fast as possible, what I tried to do is set it up already for the first module. So what you see here is my constructed simulation for the module number one. So we've got the mesh for the module in red, and we've got the volume mesh for the discretized domain in black. All right, so let's build our simulation completely by completing this volume mesh. So what we need to do is create a mesh around this second module that I'm picking at the very moment. 
And you see at the very bottom of this wizard here, we ask for a series of ingredients. How do we want to mesh it? So first of all, we need to tessellate the surface. So we speak the surface measure, quite automatic. What's interesting is the rest of the suggestion. So the volume mesh we'll use here are those exhydral trim cells. So I'll pick the trim cell measure. And very interestingly, you see the suggestion continues and you have the choice to pick even more optional measures. The one I'm interested in here is this one, the prism layer measure, because it will allow us to generate orthogonal prismatic layers close to the surface with the idea to really capture well what's going on at the walls. So let me pick this and my selection is complete. Okay, so now that we have picked our main ingredients, what's left for us to do is define some characteristic values to generate those exhydral elements. And everything is done rather automatically. You just need to input a reference value and define some things around it. So this reference value here in Starship Plus is called the base size and we'll set it to 0.02. And what's interesting is Star System Plus is auto able to automatically rate those meshes. So it's able to, for instance, reduce the mesh up to a point if it detects some features, some curvatures, small details, and it will do up to a certain value, which is called the minimum surface size here. And I set that to being 50% of the base size. There's a minimum, there's also a maximum here, and I'll just keep it to 100% of the base size, which corresponds to our 0.02. I was talking about the prism layer measure, and if you come a little bit closer, I'm talking about those ones, those anisotropic cells, those layers here, close to the walls that will allow us to capture what's going on there. And I'll set that to being 50% of the base size. Okay, once I did this, basically, I set and defined a certain number of rules, and Star CCM Plus will follow all of these rules to generate the mesh around the second module. And it will do it automatically by clicking on this uh, execution button here and there it appears our third mesh the mesh around the second module in blue with this done what we did is complete the first part of the workflow in star system plus we did build our model now let's move on to the second step which will be the testing to do the testing what we need to do is define the complex physics, the water, the gases, but also implement the very complex motion we saw in the animation at the beginning. And you may already are wondering, how do we do this in Star System Plus? How do we get the flow field exchange between those three different meshes throughout the motion? Well, Star System Plus has a unique and revolutionary brand new technology that just do this. And it's called Overset Meshes. In a nutshell, it's an easy procedure to implement complex motion. Just requires three things. The first step would be to generate a mesh. We have it here. The second step would be to identify the moving objects. So we've got the red and the blue here. And the last step would be to <coughs> assemble that and enable the motion. All right. So we did that for the first module in red. Let's do that for the second module. First step, I said, enable, let SASM Plus know which are the moving objects. Okay, this is now done. Second step, let's ask Plus know which are the overlapping domains. So we've got the second module moving inside the domain, so we need to let us ask Plus know this. All right, this is done. And if you remember the animation, both modules have come really close to one another. So what happens is in fact, you've got the blue and the red domains here coming really close to one another and overlapping. We need to let us ask Plus know of this. And this is pretty much done now. First step, identify the moving objects. Second step, interface them. Third step, implement the motion. And I did that using a series of checkpoints. So Star System Plus will know at which point, moment in time where the module should be. Okay, so this is pretty much done. I can already start to, to test my motion. Okay. I've initialized and you see Star Sim Plus automatically reassemble the mesh, just getting the weighted volume. And pressing the run button allows me to enable the motion. So we got the first module going through a series of checkpoints and letting it letting it being etched. Later on, the second module which is being inspected is starting. And we see uh, this happening in 3D as well. 
But this is quite rapid here because I'm just simulating for the motion. What I would like to do is, is go a little bit further. So I will go and look at how the fluid dynamics problem is being set up. And with this done, we'll have finalized the testing part of the workflow. Okay, so let's now stop. Okay, in order to complete the testing, now that I've implemented my motion, I need to define the physical part of the problem. And this is done through a wizard here, which is asking you a series of questions to which you have to provide some answers. So the first one, is it three-dimensional? Yes. Is it unsteady? Yes. Uh, what is the material you're considering? Uh, in fact, here we do have several fluids. We do have water, different gases, so we need to pick up the oil and multiphase. And South Plus has a wide range of multiphase flow you can choose from. It will depend on the flow regime you're dealing with. Here, we're trying to capture the shape of a bubble, so we need the volume of fluid method. Uh, the viscous regime of those fluids is asked, so it's going to be turbulent. And you can see Star CCM Plus has a wide range of turbulence model you can choose from. And I'll select the K Epsilon model. On the right hand side, you do have here a typical CFD problem being set up. And on the left hand side, you see the suggestion continues. So you can add layers of complexity on top of this problem. For instance, here we need to account for the effects of gravity. And if you were to deal with, you know, the conjugate heat transfer problems in this simulation, you could turn on the multiphase temperature and all the radiation. Okay, but let's focus on our problem at end and we need to define the two phases, the two fluids being considered. So there is a liquid <coughs> of constant density and by default star system plus select H2O, which is great. The second phase is made of several gases, so I'll select the multi-component gas and those gases are not really reacting. So I will select this ideal gas for the equation of state. Starcm Plus already has a material database with a wide range of elements you can choose from. So there is air that we could pick in this simulation, there is CO2, but really that's just a, a default database. If you want to enrich this with more exotic or other components, that's totally possible. Okay, so the physical part of the problem is set up. What remains would be to define some uh, operating conditions. So the speed at which gas is being released through these inlets here, the speed at which the water is being injected there. We can uh, specify uh, another surface treatment for the wafer. We can define the contact angle, etc. Okay, so we built our virtual prototype we just tested it by implementing the complex motion and specifying some physics. Now we can move to the last part, which is the assessment. Allow me to switch back to the PowerPoint where I've completed the simulation. And here is how it looks like. We've got the water being injected here, a bubble is formed and the wafer motion you can see moves quite abruptly. What we clearly see where the contact lines moving and as the modules move, they've dragged and stretched, and eventually you see it results in some stripping of liquid droplets. As a conclusion, the design is not successful. We're going to have droplets that will evaporate and mark the wafer. So how do we go about it? Well, when you look at this section through the pumping system, you see the system is strong enough to suck the water out, but it's not been able to maintain the bubble in place. It's quite unstable. And well, I think it's due to the fact the flow here is allowed to expand a little bit too much in this design. And in a second iteration, what I would like to try to do is reduce the cross section to see how it goes. Well, we did build, tested and assessed a first analysis. As mentioned previously, it is quick and pain free to make a change in Star CCM Plus in order to try to improve our design. As a matter of fact, because it just requires a few clicks, in this case, I switch back to Star CCM Plus to test a variant. Okay, so let's start again from scratch. We had the first design. Let's now replace the lens with a new, new water system. Okay, so it's being replaced. And now we just need to ask Star CCM Plus to rebuild the geometrical model and the volume mesh by clicking on this button. 
So all the rules we specified earlier, if you remember, in the mesh operation, they were out of date, and Astar Simplus is refollowing all the rules to regenerate a mesh. And eventually, here is the second design, and now it compares with the original one on the top left corner of the window. We rebuild the system rapidly, very rapid to make the test again. Okay. So again, this simulation is only computing the motion. Let's switch back to the PowerPoint to look at the completed and corresponding simulation with all the physics in it. So here is the result this time. We are successful throughout the entire motion. We have no bubble, we have no droplets. And this is due to this uh, reduced section. So we did observe here accelerating flow. So the flow velocity is raised quite importantly. And this time it helped us maintain the bubble into place and throughout the entire motion. And eventually you reach the end of the, the system and we'll have to remove all the water. And even that is working as intended. Okay. So far I've been focusing on the water pumping system, but if you remember, we were considering multiple gas and they were also present in this simulation. In fact, there are several gas applications in lithography. For instance, we had hair and in more specifically clean dry hair that has been used to shield the hood against ambient air and avoid contamination. Also, we were using CO2 that was injected around the water to prevent what we call the big bubble effect. And it's really great to use Star Simplus here because we will also be able to extract insight into this gas application and thus allow us to design efficient gas handling system. What we'll need to do is guarantee a clean environment, make sure we shield the bubble correctly. Well, we're reaching the end of this session and this was the opportunity for me to show you the integrated environment of Star System Plus. We just built tested and assessed the performance of a lithography machine quite efficiently. The case I selected here demonstrated that we can leverage extensive modeling capabilities to simulate complex motion and multidisciplinary problems. We also could improve our design thanks to a streamlined process that enables us to make quick and pain-free modifications to the virtual prototypes. Thank you.